All right, welcome back, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart. Both published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Dean Koontz Phantoms. I don't know if you can see Phantoms or Phantoms. Dean Koontz Phantoms. That's right. Dean Koontz wrote this in 1983. Let's talk about the cover. We always talk about the covers first. You know, it looks like your typical Dean Koontz horror novel cover. It's got a picture of him and his doggy on the back. You know, when we talk about dogs, I've always said, you know, that's a pretty handsome looking dog. But on the Robert Parker books, he's got a picture of himself with his dog too. And I don't know, in a cage match to the death, which dog do you think would win? That puppy or that puppy? I mean, there's they both look like lovely little puppies. But, you know, I want to put them in a cage match and see which one comes out alive. Anyway, if I ever do get a dog and, and pose with it on the cover of my books, because I just, you know, I pose with, um, my author photo is me in front of a castle. And it probably always will be, but if I do get a dog, I'm going to get one of those type of dogs that, you know, not a little chihuahua or a little, one of those little rat dogs, but I'm going to get like a big, like I'm going to get like a Rottweiler or a pit bull or a German Shepherd or some, at the type of dog that's going to rip your arms off and just uh, beat you to death with them. Phantoms. What is this thing about? Well, there's a reason I decided to talk about dogs. In this book, because there are dogs in this book. Um, you know, Dean Koontz said he's um, he gets a lot of hate mail. But he says 90% of the hate mail he gets is whenever he writes a dog in a book and then the dog dies. He's like, peep, peep. He's like I can slaughter babe. I can slaughter women, children, babies. I can slaughter everything in my books in gruesome ways. Kill one dog... You lose half your readership right there. Half your readership. So we really don't want a dog match to the death with the puppies. I guess that's what he's trying to tell me. Um, anyway, this is Dean Kuhn's quintessential horror novel. You know, if you followed my review of Whispers, that was the first, Whispers was the first big hit Dean Kuhn's had. And this was the second, this was the book that he wrote right after Whiskers. And the publisher specifically said, Whispers was a borderline horror novel. If you want to ride this wave, write just a straightforward horror novel and it will launch you into the stratosphere of awesome authors that can sell billions of books. And so he's like, okay, I want to I want to be an awesome author who sells billions of books. So he wrote this straight up horror novel and he gave it to the publisher and it became way wildly more successful than Whispers and it cemented Dean Koontz as a horror writer and he had to live with he's had to live with that label for the rest of his career and he kind of he kind of this shirt is this Phil Collins shirt. Yeah, this is a Phil Collins shirt. You probably didn't realize it, but it's actually a Phil Collins shirt. But it's just like not really sitting right on my shoulders. I think it's because it's too small. I'm getting fat, folks. I'm getting fat. It's just bugging me. I can see it there in the camera. Oh my gosh. This is going to be the buy and this is going to be the single most worst book review I've ever done. Because I don't I don't even talk about the book. Um, anyway, he became labeled as a horror writer and he's never been able to shake that label. And he's said in interviews, you know, if he had to go do it again, he probably wouldn't have done what the publisher asked and just written a straightforward horror book. He probably would have done something else. Because he doesn't really, he doesn't consider himself a horror novel. He considers himself a thriller writer. And... 90% of his stuff is just straight thriller. Only if, only, you know, not every one of them has the supernatural X-Files stuff like this does. What is this about? 
It's about Snowfield, California, a ski town. Some people arrive, they want to go ski, they want to have a good time, and they, they arrive, and they notice, they walk in, and they notice that their maid is dead, laying dead on the floor. They're like, what's going on? But she's not the maid, ain't the only one dead. As they walk, as they search the town, they notice that there's like a hundred dead people, and like everybody else is missing. Like the whole town is either missing or dead, except for a few stragglers here and there, and a few dogs. And anyway... So this is what where this is where the horror takes place. They're trying to figure this out and creepy creepy crawly stuff starts to happen. They can't figure out if there's a serial killer, if there's terrorism, if there's some sort of um, disease like covid is just wiped over. They don't know why the people are dead and then they and then um it just they kind of things just get creepier and creepier. And these, I don't want to say what it is. I almost said monsters, but I don't know if that's really the word I want to use. Anyway, things just go ass over teapot in a hurry. And there's a lot of creepy crawly things. And there's a cast of characters that I feel is just a little too big. But anyway, that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's like a horror novel. It's like, I won't tell you what it is, whether it's zombies, vampires, werewolves ghosts goblins monsters um you know aliens i won't tell you what it is that's creating this problem in the town you'll just have to read it and figure it out and see who lives and dies and how they and how they get but it's it's like this is just like i mean this is like a boilerplate script for a horror book i mean it's just it's really like really like kind of it really ticks off the horror genre stuff you know, like there's this thing, this this horror. You know, it's it's like every it's like every uh every horror movie you've seen, which isn't bad. I mean, because Dean Koontz writes great stuff. I mean, you're engaged all the time. You, I can't say that you're going to be bored with this because you're not. It's it's a, it's a very well written book, a very exciting book, very fast paced book, very interesting book. Um, just not my favorite Dean Koontz book, I'll tell you that right now. I, I did like Whispers a lot more. I liked Strangers a lot more. There was a lot of Dean Koontz books that I like a lot more than this. But still, Dean Koontz is a badass writer, and you, and you gotta give him props for writing great thrillers all the time. So anyway, I would give this probably a 7.5 out of 10. It's a very, very solid run-of-the-mill horror book. If you want to just stay up and, uh, and, and, and be kind of haunted by a haunted town, that's what, that's what we're dealing with.